o'clock. ABC 10 News at 5 starts right now. A local man accused of taking part in the U.S. Capitol riots. He appeared in federal court just hours ago. How the FBI managed to track him down. Plus, demand for the COVID-19 vaccine continues to outpace supply here in San Diego County. The plan county leaders are rolling out to address the issue. And get ready for more rain. The Pinpoint Weather Team is tracking when the next storm will arrive in your neighborhood. ABC 10 News at 5 starts now. And good evening. I'm Steve Atkinson. I am joined remotely by my co-anchor, Lindsay Pena. We'll be checking in with her shortly. But first, a Coronado man pleaded not guilty today after he was charged for his alleged role in the riots at the U.S. Capitol. Court documents say that Jeffrey Alexander Smith was identified through a photo on social media. As our ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer Castor tells us, this is the first local arrest related to the national investigation. According to the FBI, the suspect, Jeffrey Alexander Smith, aka Alex Smith, told a special agent that he deleted his Instagram account after he began receiving threats related to his involvement in the Capitol events. A photo released Thursday by the FBI of a Coronado man who agents believe was directly involved in the breach of the U.S. Capitol. One witness who knows Jeffrey Alexander Smith, a.k.a. Alex Smith, reportedly discovered a photo of him on social media, posted to Instagram by the account at Homegrown Terrorists. He's seen wearing a black jacket and Trump hat with a red cell phone in his right hand, which is raised in the air. According to the FBI, Smith showed that witness a video he took of himself walking into the Capitol on January 6th. Cameras were not allowed into the federal courtroom Thursday afternoon where Smith went before a judge for his initial appearance on charges related to his alleged role in the attack. It comes after he was arrested Wednesday morning by San Diego FBI agents. The FBI reports that someone who grew up with Smith in Coronado also came forward saying they texted with him through Instagram after the riots. That witness reportedly shared screenshots of his texts where he wrote, I'm a patriot, I stormed the Capitol, and that his purpose was to send a message that Americans aren't going to take a fraudulent election. He also reportedly wrote that he wasn't going to drive 38 hours from San Diego to not walk right through the front of the Capitol building. Charging documents show that when the agent contacted Smith, he apparently told the agent he was in D.C. for President Trump speech, but told his girlfriend to stay in the hotel because of the chaos at the Capitol. The FBI states that he admitted that he saw the chaos and Smith admitted he walked into the Capitol on January 6, 2021 and remained in the Capitol for about 30 minutes. There is nothing in the criminal complaint stating that Smith directly participated in any of the violence. The Capitol investigation remains open and ongoing. The FBI is encouraging the public with any information to provide to please come forward. Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. Smith's bond was set at $25,000. His next court appearance is on February 11th. Now, the Department of Homeland Security has issued a national terrorism bulletin warning that domestic extremists could continue to mobilize, fueled in part by anger over false claims about the 2020 election. And today, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi sounded the alarm about potential threats from within Congress. We will probably need a supplemental uh, for uh, more security for members when the enemy is within the House of Representatives. Pelosi is calling out GOP leaders for supporting Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has backed QAnon conspiracy theories. In a video, she's heard accusing Pelosi of treason, which she says is punishable by death. Greene has not denounced the post. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. There are plans to open more vaccine sites across San Diego County as demand continues to exceed supply. ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Parra is joining us. And Anthony, this afternoon, county leaders addressed what's being done to keep up with its vaccination goals. Well, county leaders say that they are ahead of their vaccination goals and that they had hoped to administer 250,000 doses of the vaccine by the end of the month. Currently, they have administered more than 269,000 doses. Now, county officials say that they are hoping to get a more steady supply of the vaccine moving forward, as well as open up more locations for people to get the vaccine. There is a new vaccine superstation 
opening up this weekend in the North County at Cal State San Marcos. And next week there are plans to open another superstation in East County. That is on top of the two existing ones, one near Petco Park and in Chula Vista. There are also seven smaller so-called pod locations open and they plan to open up six more of those next week. Now, Right now, the county is directing people to set up vaccination appointments through the My Turn system set up by the state. It is a new system and they say they've made improvements. The county says there is a regional map that's been added to make it easier for people to find a vaccination site. They say they've made it easier to schedule first and second appointments, though right now the spots are going very fast. The demand for appointments still remains exceedingly high. Uh, the biggest complaint we get is people say I can't get an appointment uh, and the minute that they are made available they are gone and while we know that is frustrating to folks who want to get it it is encouraging uh, overall at the demand of where we are. And for those people 75 and older who don't have access to a computer the county says they can call 211 to set up an appointment that way. We're reporting live tonight Anthony Pura ABC 10 News. As of today, more than 224,000 people in San Diego County have been vaccinated for COVID-19. And more than 45,000 have been fully vaccinated, meaning they've received both of their shots. A desperate call for volunteers to help with the long delays at the Petco Park vaccine superstation. We spoke with people frustrated about, about having to wait hours in traffic for their turn. The volunteer director says about 20% of the people working at the superstation are volunteers, and there aren't enough of them. The volunteers help with things like bringing supplies where they're needed, directing people where to go, and observing people once they get the shot. We spoke with one retiree who signed up to help. When the pandemic hit, you feel useless, like you should be helping somehow. And honestly, it was the first opportunity that I felt like I could do to help with the pandemic. Volunteers go through a background check before being allowed to help. And we know there are a lot of questions and different experiences with the vaccine rollout. Our ABC 10 News in-depth team is committed to tracking down answers and sharing your stories. Just send us an email to tips at 10news.com. A new study suggests that another experimental COVID-19 vaccine is effective against the so-called UK variant. Maryland-based biotech firm Novavax said its vaccine was more than 85% effective against that mutation. The results come, a phase, come from a phase three clinical trial being conducted in the UK right now. The study also found the vaccine to be more than 89% effective in protecting against COVID-19 in general. It's not clear right now if this data is enough for Novavax to be given emergency use authorization from the FDA here in the U.S., but more than likely the company is still months away from distribution here in the U.S. And the nation's first known case of that South African variant of COVID-19, it's now popped up in South Carolina. Two people with no travel history in different parts of the state have contracted it. Early data shows that vaccines will work against that mutation, but Dr. Anthony Fauci says that drug makers are looking into booster shots. We're going ahead already now and trying to stay a step or two ahead of things by making vaccines along the same type that we made for the ones we're giving now, but having it be directed specifically against the isolate that's in South Africa. The CDC also says at least 315 variants of the UK variant have been confirmed in the US. Now, turning now to weather for the third time this week, a winter storm will bring heavy rain to San Diego County. We're going to check in now with our meteorologist Angelica Campo. She is tracking that storm and Angelica, this one should be a little bit cooler or rather not as cool, right? That's right. There are some differences with this one. This one is going to be warmer. It's going to bring a lot more rain and the snow is going to be higher at higher elevations, which means any snow on the ground in places like Julian could actually lead to flooding. So let me show you how much is still left on the ground. We had about seven inches with the previous storm in Julian. With the next storm, we could see one to two inches of rain in our mountains. So that is going to be a concern. The storm over the last three hours, making some movement, just making its way into Los Angeles. But again, we're tapping into warmer air and also the atmospheric river. 
So an average one to two inches could be possible anywhere in the county, especially for inland communities in our mountains. But coastal communities are going to be pretty close to that. Then you add the high tide tomorrow close to 9 a.m., and that may also lead to flooding. So our flash flood watch goes into effect tonight at 7 but it's going to be a little bit later before we actually start to see some of that heavier rainfall. We're going to break it down hour by hour. I'll show you the rain totals across the county. And also With more how rain snow on the way, people across San Diego County are doing some last minute storm preps. ABC 10 News reporter Cassie Carlisle shows us how the city of Chula Vista is lending a hand. Here in Chula Vista, it's been really busy all day. Dozens of cars pulling in to pick up their sandbags. The workers here say that they haven't seen this big of a crowd all year. Of course, all of this in anticipation of the incoming storm. Thursday, Chula Vista neighbors streamed into the city's public works facility to make sure they don't get flooded again. We did have um, some leaks. We had water coming in through the concrete and making its way into our room. Last time it rained, it flooded. We had to pull up carpeting and everything. So we're getting prepared to make sure it doesn't happen again tomorrow. The city handing out free sandbags to divert rainwater. All you need is proof of residency and you can get up to 10 bags per household. Neighbors say it's easy and fast. Come on down, get your sandbags, you back up, they put them in their trunk for you and you're off you go. Up in Hamul where the Valley Fire burned, neighbors have their preventative measures in place. Get fiber rolls, get check dams, get um, sandbags. That stuff will make a massive difference. Hoping to prevent a mudslide or other flooding damage. With a flash flood watch in effect Thursday night to late Friday afternoon, drivers will also have to be weary on the roads. Yeah, just drive a little bit more slowly because the freeways get kind of crazy out there when it rains over here. This swift water rescue, a reminder to not drive into any standing or rushing water. This happened just a few days ago on Monday. The wet weather needed during a dry winter. Hopefully everyone takes precautions to stay dry. Cassie Carlisle, ABC 10 News. Uh, we reached out to roofing companies that say they are busy right now making repairs, but this is the busy time of the year for them, and we're on pace with last winter. It's not the rain, it's the pandemic, because some of the world's best golfers are here in San Diego for the Farmers Insurance Open. It got underway today, but things are looking, as we mentioned, a bit different because of the pandemic. Our 10 News Sports Director Ben Higgins is joining us live today. Tory Pines. Ben. Hey, Steve. Yeah, it's a shame no fans could enjoy the first round of the Farmers Insurance Open because it was a beautiful day here at Torrey Pines, but there was also extra pressure on golfers to shoot a low score because they know how difficult conditions could get with the impending rain coming. Golfers had their eyes on the skies today. A couple of local favorites opened up on the easier north course. Xander Shoffley has only made the cut here once, but his best shot today came on the sixth hole setting up a birdie to get to two under par, which is where he finished the day. Phil Mickelson had to make a couple of late birdies to get out of the black numbers. He'd end the day at one under par 71 and now faces the tougher south course. Speaking of the south, Rory McIlroy had a solid opening round on the U.S. Open track from the rough on nine, and he nearly holes it out for an eagle, settles for a birdie, but a four under 68 for McIlroy. But his former Masters champion, Patrick Reed, who shares the lead with Alex Noren after an 8-under 64 on the north, he never even came close to a bogey, taking full advantage of the great conditions. Definitely felt easy out there, just kind of with how I was hitting the driver, getting the ball in, you know, in the fairway. And I was working it both ways, which was nice. You know, It's not like I had only one way to go. I was able to hit the draws, hit the fades, and, uh, and I think the longest, the hardest, uh, longest chance I had was on four today. Besides that, everything else was uh, was was pretty easy. Well, it's definitely not going to be easy when the rain comes in. Torrey Pines is going to play like a beast in the second round and beyond. We'll have an update on some of the other big names in the field coming up on ABC 10 News at 6. Live at the Farmers Insurance Open at Torrey Pines, I'm Ben Higgins, ABC 10 News. Pioneering and award-winning actress Cicely Tyson has died. Tyson had many notable roles in a career that started back in the 1950s. She earned a Best Actress nomination for her work in the 1973 movie Sounder. She was nominated for 16 Emmys, winning twice. She also won a Tony. Tyson famously refused to play parts that she felt were demeaning to black women. Cicely Tyson 
was 96 years old. 